Ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Carr. A big welcome. Well, thanks very much. Um, now, let's just canter through your early life, shall we? Cambridge educated? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was. A lot of people take that the wrong way. A lot of people think if you're Cambridge educated, you may be a bit pompous and up yourself. Not true. <laughs> Only reason I went to Cambridge is because I got four A's available. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then after Cambridge, it was off to work for an oil company. Yes, Shell. Middle management? Yeah, middle. I was in marketing for oil. OK. Which is technically the easiest job on the planet. <laughs> do, you, do you have a fuel gauge in your car? Yeah. Yeah. You know when that goes into the red? Yeah. Buy some petrol. <laughs> <laughs> job done. <laughs> Because I mean, I've got a gra I've got this big thing going at the moment with you know how ooh, crude oil so bad. Ooh. It's not bad at all. Crude oil is magnificent stuff. It should be called magnificent oil, and then people would not get so worried when it crashes all over a beach in Wales. You think a rebrand is needed? Well, yes, because what do you get? A couple of sticky guillemots. That sounds painful. <laughs> it's a bird. It's, it's a, a bird. It's a bird, and they get a bit oily, and then you wash them down, and it's fine, and everything's absolutely fine after that. But oh, the oil companies, they're so bad, and how much are they now contributing to the Exchequer? They make £800,000 an hour profit shell. An hour? An hour. That's more than I make in a week. <laughs> 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 but then you've got a Cambridge education, so, you know, it's fair dues. <laughs> um, anyway, you're a success now. Uh, yeah, if you like, yeah, Huge why not? success, your own TV show, very successful tour, film, radio show, the lot. And you've got a Rover 75. I know, I've done well. <laughs> I thought I'd treat myself. <laughs> well, what happened is, earlier in the year, I was thinking about buying a new car, uh, maybe some kind of CL Merc, and uh, had a chat with my girlfriend about what new car to get, and, uh, you know, after a couple of hours, we both decided that the best thing to do was to get new curtains. <laughs> Very happy with that decision. <laughs> so you've wound up still with the Rover 75, which, let's be honest, is a dreadful car, really. Well, I won't have that said. <laughs> it's brilliant. This one is significantly better than the last one I had. You've had two? Yeah, I had... So I... you bought one and then sold it and then bought another one? Not quite. What actually happened was the first one blew up twice at high speed <laughs> and then they sold me another one. That's madness. Well, what happened? It was an LPG car. Someone had converted it to LPG. A fellow with a pipe and a beard had gone, yeah, I could, I could do that, easy. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd put the wrong kind of fuel manifold on it, if that's not too technical. He put a few, uh, uh, plastic fuel manifold, I think, made out of straw, something, <laughs> and he needed a metal one. So I was doing 80 down the motorway with my girlfriend beside me, and it blew up. The entire... The engine, the brakes, everything, gone. The brakes? Yeah. Everything just went. The engine just imploded. And I thought... Right, that's a bad situation to be in. <laughs> <laughs> my first thought, of course, was not for my own... Well, it was for my own safety, but it was, don't tell Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> She'll go mental. <laughs> and then I think that's, you know, the great thing about buying a British car. I didn't go and sue them like an American would have. You put my life in danger. None of that nonsense. I said, could you sell me another one? <laughs> How much time do you spend on the road? A, a lot. I mean, not quite as much as I used to, but, I, I mean, I used to spend... I used to do the clubs, basically. And then you're, you're basically like a rep. You might as well be. You're up and down the, you know, the motorways, the M1, the M6 and whatever, going to different clubs around the place and, and, and driving around. So I used to do about 30,000 miles a year. No, oh, that is a lot. It is. I, and my sort of peeve on driving is I drive an awful lot very, very late at night because I go and I'm on stage at 9 o'clock or whatever and I'm coming back at... It's often 1 or 2 in the morning. And the speed limits are the same. I can't understand that. Why is it 70 miles an hour speed limit at 3 in the morning? There's no-one else around. You could just... Why well, not make it an autobahn at night? There are people like you on it, that's why. I'd be fine. I think if there's children playing on the motorway yeah. <laughs> at three o'clock in the morning, my driving is sort of the least of their worries. <laughs> is this something that would meet with popular approval here? Would yeah. you like, you'd like to see it? How, how fast do we think in the oh, middle of the night? 120? I think autobahn, you do what you want. 120 minimum, I would suggest, yeah. A minimum speed limit, minim that's what we need. Yeah, a minimum of 120 with police marksmen on the bridges <laughs> picking off those who can't make it. Yes. You it's all and part your of your over. dream of a, a police state. <laughs> yes, a police state, but working for us rather than against us. Because the other thing as well that I find these days is we, we talk a, a fair bit on this programme about there being too many signposts. But there's on, no... On carts? No, no, there's none on cars. Right, good. 
No, I see. No, at the what? side of the road, you know, telling you how to walk to the library. But the amount of towns that don't signpost other towns from them drives you no. mental. You, do know, you know when you're lost around Great Britain when it says town centre and you go, what town? <laughs> <laughs> That's not helping. It isn't. My favourite sign of all time is falling rocks. You know the red triangle, mm. falling rocks? What am I meant to do with that information? <laughs> <laughs> I may as well just have a sign saying, random accidents ahead. <laughs> Life's a lottery, be lucky. <laughs> um, OK, fine. Um, the time has come to see how you got on in our reasonably priced car. Uh, how was it out there? Uh, it, was, it, was, it was surprisingly um, fun. I didn't think I was going to take it seriously. And then I got out there and thought, this is brilliant. It was the Stig, amazing. The Stig did say that he's never met anyone who, and I think he put it, dicks about as much as you. <laughs> We had a laugh. Yeah, he's... I mean, it was fun. It was, you know, we spun out a couple of times. That was kind of fun, and it was, yeah. you know, it was good. Anyone want to see one of those spins? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's see, because I think we may have just captured one here. Let's have a look at this. Oh, second to last corner, as is usual. There you and... go. Perfect. Perfect racing line. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Whoa. Yeah, there you go. That was my fastest time. I'm really, really sorry, Jeremy. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but can I have a go in the Aston Martin, please? <laughs> <laughs> no. The, no, the you thing can't. about that, Jeremy, the thing about that is my little face in a crash helmet. It, it looks like a fat kid that's been shot in a lift. <laughs> <laughs> No, what I loved was the camera crews were all on the radios going, would it be all right if we stood a bit further back than <laughs> usual? Because there was this sense of dicking about at enormous speed. It, seems, it sounds like you're quite brave behind the wheel of a car. What could possibly go wrong? Well, you could have rolled it over. <laughs> <laughs> what now? No, no, you could have done. In that shot there, there's a moment when it just hops. Michael Gambon had a similar problem. You want to get health and safety on that, mate. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, you don't want to let me out there in one of those again. Who'd like to see Jimmy's lap? Let, let's, yeah. no, let's, OK, let's not. play it. Did the clutch survive that? Who cares? Oh, mirror, signal, manoeuvre. Let's have a look. That's, what's the matter with that? That's fine. No, you're right. I can, I can find nothing wrong with that first corner. The yes. I tell you, when they're not your tyres, it's much easier to do. Oh, now this is that's Again, that's a perfect. whole new approach. That we are actually going to die. Did you break? Uh, I didn't break much. No. That squeaky noise, that's the braking. That's the tyres being torn from the rims. This is aggressive. I can see what the guys were on about out there. I don't think it's aggressive. It's playful. <laughs> Did you lift off going through there at all? I don't think... I, I, no, I didn't lift off no. for a second. And here we go, into the second-to-last corner, which is where things went wrong. Yeah, a little bit on the grass. And up to the last corner. Yes, just about there, and there he is. I got the time. I've just been told. How embarrassing is it? What do you is think? It, Anywhere? Is it? Well, I'm hoping to not be at the bottom. Well, no, that's impossible. The car was moving. We could see <laughs> that. <laughs> was... Yeah, I did go the right way round. You went the right way round. You didn't do what Jonathan Ross did. Didn't get lost. <laughs> uh, well, Jonathan's way way down there. That'd be it'd be good to beat him. Jonathan um, Ross. Yeah. Oh yeah, you've beaten him. Be nice to beat uh, Steve Coogan. Coogan was in the wet, so don't worry, you beat him. Uh, Bill Bailey, he's a funny bloke. I like he is to... funny, and you yeah. beat him. He was in the wet though as well. You had a dry track, so you can forget these is ones. Is that Keelty? The did Keelty do that well? Keelty, oh, up at one forty-eight, he did I... do that well. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, you know, happy, happy in mid-table. I would have thought. Happy in mid-table. Well, you did it actually in um, one forty-six point nine. <laughs> Jeremy Beadle, that's... <laughs> <laughs> it can't... Hand can't on be. heart, that, despite the look of it, was the fastest time ever you've taken Cowl off the top. Yeah.